Hey, Rob here. Thank you again for joining me while we look at another book from the Wild 90s, Wild, Wild Cats Trilogy. So I haven't yet dove into the book that this is. Um, this is a three-issue spinoff of a, another book by Jim Lee of X-Men fame. I've mentioned him quite a bit, and we've done a look at um, Death Blow and X-Men number one by Jim Lee. And when he took off to go do Image Comics, he started his own book, um, Wildcats. And this is a collection of Wildcats. This was his own miniseries that spun off into its own regular series for a while. Um, four issues was the miniseries. But eventually, he did this um, Wildcats trilogy, they just call it. I don't know why, just Wildcats trilogy. But it's just three issues um, of a standalone story. But the main selling point, like I'm not going to talk too much about the story that's going on here. The main thing is the art. The artist is by Jay Lee. He is... He at this time he was just a monster. He the, if you look at this artwork here, um, and we'll see some stuff on the inside to compare it to. But if you see the way he these are well, first off, <laughs> look at this crazy shiny. I think they call it hollow foil cover. I mean, if you look like the next issue, it's just a regular comic book print. But this thing has this crazy metallic sheen to it that just made it stand out. It's really crazy. But you see these. These are superheroes, right? Look at this guy. He looks like a crazy demonic monster. Like, let's look at the vision the way the original arts drew him. Classic superhero. So that's a very significant visual difference between these characters. That guy in the background there, Warblade is his name, versus that version of him there. Um... That's voodoo right there versus that version of her. I'm not saying one is better or worse, but Jim Lee was quite the master, the, the premier superhero penciler of his day and maybe is still to this day. But this Jay Lee guy, he comes along and he just rocks this crazy, hardcore, dark, gritty, almost, I, I think of it like horror type artwork. It's so creepy. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to be too concerned about the story. We're just going to just marvel over this crazy artwork. Um, he does a lot of wild, like this is, it's full of ink splatter and paint on black, um, scratchy razor blade to give it textures. Um, just a lot of really wild things that, um, make it stand out. He also has this amazing way, as you'll see, where he has the ability to draw an entire comic book and draw minimal backgrounds, including up to and including none. But you kind of don't notice it. But that's okay. So, story here. Brandon Choi, who wrote the worst stuff you've ever read. And I guess it says David Wynn. I guess. Never heard of him. Jay Lee on the art. Joe Chiodo colors. He is a great, great colorist. Though there are some weird choices in this book. Most of it's good, but there's some weird stuff. But let's flip through this. I mean, just look at this already. Like, look at this monstrous, crazy, wild, just, like I said, like horror comics. It's scary looking. Again, just for comparison, if we get out and just look at the art from the original Jim Lee, and let's see, like here's like random bum guys on the street. All right, clean, clear versus that scary stuff. Man, this as an artist, um, this stuff jumped out and made you look like you really couldn't help but notice it. He had been drawing stuff for Marvel Comics. He was on Namor and um, he did some stuff for the Rob Liefeld Studios, did a um, Youngblood Strike File, I think, a Chapel miniseries, things like that. He did his own book, uh, Hellshock for Image, which we'll look at. But I just dug these out because of the Wildcats, the Image, the 90s. This is done in 1993. This is the height of all the Image stuff. Um Look at this just hulking, monstrous size. Like this character, uh, Grifter, he's normally just a normal human-sized man. But look at the way this artist depicts him. Um, these shadows on this brick, that crazy perspective. These dark, heavy shadows, these gnarled, wild-looking hands. 
I mean, and then look at this close up of this face. Look at what well, I wish I could see the original black and white artwork to this. I'm sure I could, I should have actually looked up some and had it on the iPad to look at with this, but he's got such crazy rendering techniques because this artist, he is doing pencils and inks. This is why, how, this is how you get these kind of crazy textures that just stand out from everybody else. And then here's this ink splatter we're talking about. I mean, that guy's getting slaughtered horrifically, a big knife through the head. So this ink splatter gives it that, give it a, this raw, bloody, gross, violent texture. It's just great. And here's a big splash page of your heroes right here. I mean, again, these are your, these are your heroes of the book. These are the superheroes. Here's another, you know, kind of very clean cut, traditional superhero stuff, right? Nice, pretty, good. But look at these guys. There's that same main character. Look at that hand and the way he just renders everything and that wild background, how they do that. And that coloring, just adding effects to it. it <laughs> I wish I could watch him draw these pages. These look so good. I like this blast page. Look at those colors just going nuts there. This guy had something that almost no one else had. But again, you also notice there's not much in the way of backgrounds. He's mostly focusing on these big, awesome characters that just look incredible, rendering them really cool, great poses, dynamic, interesting stuff, and the colors is just bringing it. Um, not a lot of background. And, you know, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. You know, technically speaking, it is a bad thing. But, you know, from a kind of technical, professional kind of view. But when you make it work this good and it looks this good... Who cares, right? Coloring, just doing some crazy effects there. Like I said, I believe I said, I'm not really gonna get digging into the story or anything like that. We're just here to look at this crazy artwork. I always thought this picture of the girl here was, for a moment, he finally softens up and lets it be like soft flowing feminine lines because she's trying to be flirty to this guy here, of course. This crazy drawing of this guy, it's like he's running jumping down from a roof I don't know what's going on but it looks crazy good um, we'll just keep going here um, there's a bunch of panels of storytelling and stuff now I say that he has minimal background sometimes none he can do them but I think that he's just pumping out pages really fast he's trying to blow through these books to get them out so he finds a way to draw them dynamically and interesting but also fast and uh, I think he certainly uh, found that way. These robotic monster creatures, those are great. So much ink just expended all over the page. How that must be, how he, um, I wonder if he, he must mask them off or use frisket or something like that to do this ink splatter on them, but not cover the characters. I, again, this would be a wonderfully interesting thing to be able to see him do this. Of course, there's big, crazy action shooting, laser guns. Look, I mean, for gun blasts on this guy right here. I mean, they look like headlights almost in a way. Um, but that's all right. This way that he, you know, he's, he's taking his ink line and just doing this scratchy, you know. Like, would you think to render a hand like that? I would never think that, but it gives it a look that is unique to him and it works somehow. It's scary, creepy. There's a big hulking monster guy with big crazy anatomy and muscles and more of that ink splatter beating the shit out of our guy here. I like this page. He's doing some good, interesting panel layouts. I like these soft eyes. Um, this character, um, Void is her name. I know I just showed this, but for example, um, I'm gonna pull out that same image I just showed. This character, like, her body is, it's like, her face is the only thing that's showing skin. The rest of it was covered in this silver metallic bodysuit thing. And she's, she can teleport. She's got weird magical powers. If they were ever really defined, I don't know what it is. But this is just a very interesting way to draw. First, he's getting into, like, I get to draw a female character that's essentially a nude figure. Um... So he just gets to draw all the curves and lines and then the coloring is really doing some really neat stuff here. I love this, the colors through here and then this warmer tone under it there and on the edges to give it like a backlighting. Really crazy, like looks really good. 
soft and sexy, but still wild and just strange. That just don't like this artist, but those eyes, that figure, it all looks good. Just crazy looking face. Let's keep on going through it. Look at him just doing more crazy artwork stuff. The coloring here is a little, I guess it looks good. Something about it just kind of seems weird to me. Not bad, but just, I don't know. I, I, it's not great. Something about it doesn't sit well with me. Another great phase. Cool effects with the coloring here, like showing magical. That hand looks really good. Really like this. Another, again, these are superhero comics for kids. But look at that scary, monstrous stuff. That looks great. This guy should have drawn Spawn. I don't know if he ever did. Man, that would have been a great fit. I never really cared for too much of Spawn, honestly. But this guy drawing, it would have been incredible. Um, just more of the same with these characters' faces, lighting. One thing I noticed is I kind of did a quick flip through these before I started filming was that as they go on, sometimes you see an artist throw all their effort into the first pages of the first book, but that much effort tires you out. You have to slow down. You have to simplify because you spent so much time on those others. You have to, you have to get the books done. You have to hit a timeline and a deadline. And uh, it gets a lot more simpler. I'm not saying that's happening yet, but lack of background, certainly, like, there's no one or two or three point perspectives going on. It's just figures and coloring. This girl's like, I feel like she's kneeing somebody in the nuts, and that's why his hand is going all like that. Yeah, no more backgrounds, but just soft figures of, like, these faces and the lighting on this above the lip and the highlights under the, the brow and the nose and the chin. It just looks really good. Um, crazy, like a version of like sexy girl, but looking like something out of like a crazy violent horror movie. Good, good stuff. Final page. Not much in the way of backgrounds. Um, I like the way that he has this girl wearing this big um, like jacket coat thing with like fold and textures up here, but it fades out into no line work, just like this negative space. It's got these little twisty, twirly things coming up. Almost looks like something out of like Nightmare Before Christmas and that art, crazy art deco design. Whatever it is, it looks neat. It looks cool. That's a, you can't overstate that. If it looks fucking cool, you love it. You dig it. Crazy whatever the hell background's going on. Who knows? Um, still a couple pages to go in the book. I think it's just ads. They were getting ready to announce um, this Gen 13 book was going to come out with this artist, J. Scott Campbell, when he was, only, he was known by Jeffrey Scott at this point. And that was going to become probably the biggest book they ever did. Um, I didn't care for it at first, but once the artist kind of came into his own, he really became good. And I did a video on uh, this guy doing an art book several years later that's just got some of the most amazing artwork I've, I've ever seen. But that was kind of what was going on at the time. So that's issue one. Let's get out issue two. Nice, simple cover. Um, weird pose. What's going on? I, I, who knows? Does that tell you anything? It doesn't tell you anything. Sometimes a cover that actually tells you like a, a story almost is, it's like a lost art. This is just a pose of like good artists doing hot girls standing there looking intense and weird and hot. All right. Sold. Sign me up. Um, same art teams. Um, I like this castle hanging out all these cliffs and this mountain in the background this faded atmospheric stuff the color is doing a lot of heavy lifting there but that looks really cool digging it um i thought that this panel really looked neat that looks cool really into it uh, that girl looks good this wild thing with her hair going on looks good whatever the hell's going on we're back to i guess the ending of the previous book where this character and this character i guess she took off that jacket that she was wearing and you got all these other characters that are standing here watching someone's oh that's grifter that's the one guy that got caught and all these zombie monsters but there's no background there's no he's got some chains hanging from nowhere they're just floating in nowhere their bodies fade out to nothing the panel design is interesting with this border that comes across up here and then a big black background. No backgrounds at all, but you look at it, you just visually like, holy shit, that looks really good. I mean, it looks, it looks pretty interesting. Um, kind of like her hand coming towards you there. Hands are so hard. It looks pretty good. Anyway, good artwork, but he's taking them shortcuts and he's a master of shortcuts. This was an interesting one. I always remember this one the first time I saw it, how... 
this sword and then this spear weapon with the pointed tip they're clanging. It's just basically like you look, you can see the original artwork would have been just like this negative shape, like this white shape and white shape and then this stuff coming off it. But the colors adds those tones in it to give it some three dimensionality. It looks great. Um, characters just doing more cool '90s comic shit. Great. Let's like let's pose the girls and have them fighting and screaming at each other. Um, it's interesting how this character's leg like extends all the way through these panels. It almost gets lost. I don't know if I even actually noticed that before. I just kind of thought it ended there, but you can see it coming through the whole panel. Um, girls fight. Girls fight. This artist is just kind of doing his thing. Kind of basic squared off panels here. Then he decides to like just change it up and do these weird panel shapes through here. More of that crazy ink splatter. I remember when I had these, I, if I ever read these and actually tried to absorb the story, I maybe did it once the first time I ever did it because there's such, there's nothing here. There's nothing to read. This unreadable crap, really. It's like if we're being honest, and I know a lot of people look back on these with fondness, and so do I, but it's because of the artwork and the excitement of the time and us being youthful and kids. That made these interesting. If you look at them now, like artistically, if you're into this, it's interesting, but story-wise, you're like, eh, it's uh, okay, you know, whatever. They're not great comics. They're just 90s superhero, violent anti-hero comics. So that's fine. Um, I'm not sure what the point of the big round border is. It's probably this character teleporting them in, and that's just the way he decided to visualize that. Girls getting a little naughty with each other. Or maybe I'm just projecting. Um... This guy doing more crazy, big, hulking monster stuff. I like this. Is He shoots energy blasts from his fist. You can tell he's got this guy. Like, this is his, a neck. Um, and he's just, like, blowing his head off. Boom. Explodes right off there. That's really cool. Uh, Warblade here. He's got, he's, like, basically, like, liquid metal. He can morph his entire body. But he just mainly does his hands into these sharp blades. Just ripping people apart. Maul, the big guy. He can turn himself bigger. But the bigger he gets, the dumber he gets. He's just pounding people to death. Just doing crazy superheroic stuff. Um, oh, they defeat the bad guys, so they think. But then we find out that this girl, she's actually been, she's turned against them. She's possessed, whatever. She runs her hand right through this guy. Now, this guy's an android. He's a robot. So he can get, he can get blown up and beat up and ripped apart, which he will do all the damn time. Um, so it's a convenient excuse to be able to rip him apart. Colors doing a lot of crazy, cool effects there. Looks good. Um, again, no backgrounds, right? Just colors and stuff. This is how you get through these pages really fast. You just don't do any backgrounds. You, barely an indication of anything. Like, where are they? Do we even know? Here, at least there's something. There's in some kind of a cave. You can tell, like, the rocky formations in a pool. All right, they're in a cave, and you put it on one panel. You kind of establish it. Yeah, you get it. Oh, there's like the vaguest indications here of like a brick wall and a door. And even faded out her feet there. And that's fine. It's it's all right. Um, gosh, again, I couldn't care anything about the story that's going on. But we're, like I said, I'm not repeating myself. We're here for the artwork. We're here for the monstrous characters and the dark, violent stuff and the hot girls with thong outfits and there are a lot of their ashes showing. It's almost embarrassing how much that stuff goes on in these books. You look back on it, but it's all right. We're here for it. Ending on another big splash page. Very exciting. Um... If I remember correctly, in this, there was something that was really interesting to me. There was this artist, Travis Charest. Now, I did a uh, um, a review on the Wildcats X-Men book that he did. Um, and that, his artwork was so amazing. This is about to show us some black and white pages by that same artist when he had just barely join, joined the Image Comics guys. Now, he had been drawing comic books for a little bit. He did some work, as far as I know. The only thing he'd done was some stuff for DC Comics and a team book I can't remember the name of. Dark Stars, I think. You can tell he definitely had some. And you can look at these and tell that he had some. He's definitely got some skill. But what he is here and what he becomes in that Wildcats X-Men book, like, he would never do this overly ridiculous, sexualized, 
hyper pointy boobs that are off really like isn't this one like super misplaced like isn't it really sitting off to a weird it's not even the same I like it's just not it just looks weird but the inking on this the the layout of it um i think the drawing wise this stuff looks great like this guy definitely had something in his early pages. He just improved by leaps and bounds with every page and every book that he did. And to see an art, artist's work in black and white like this, again, this is how I draw. I only draw in black and white. To, so, so to be able to see how they do it, even if it's really old work and far from their best, it's still interesting to see. I thought this was fantastic for them to put this in here. I always liked this face. I thought the shading and everything looked really good on it. And that kitty. Miss Kitty's waving at him. So that was a neat little add-on to show some artwork from a different artist in a book that was coming up. So that was fun. That was issue two. Let's dig into issue three. Big wild collection of all these characters. You got the android guy getting ripped up again. That's just his thing. He gets ripped up. Let's uh, let's see what we got going in here. Very standard 90s stuff. Hot girl, guy chained up, energy and crap everywhere. Same art team, same writing team. He sort of did some backgrounds. Like, I think he took like a CD here and just traced it. And then the circles, um, from wild straight lines like that. That's just background. They're in some technological place, whatever. Lots of panels going on. I feel like this is where he started running out of steam. He started losing his energy, probably because he drawn two full books. He's getting tired. He's got to get through these. So they become less crazy. Less, you don't see all the blacks on here. You don't see the ink splatter nearly as much. It's in here, but he's just doing basic line work. And I kind of like it. Like this, the way he draws this girl's face and the hair, that muscular arm is pretty good. Like he's, he's doing something different. This has always looked, that's a nice figure. The cloak. Very stylized folds and everything. Looks really good. Really into it. Um, the, all these pages and everything, the story just starts kind of molding, melding together into one big kind of ridiculous pile of nonsense. I, I don't know what's going on anymore. The girl's possessed. She's got the evil look. This is one of the heroes, but she's been possessed by something. That's okay. Whatever. You know she's going to end up fine in the end. Um, this is a crazy panel. The coloring. like It's suddenly like, I think they're in her head. It's like a mental thing. So they, they change the color palette to this whole other thing to make you feel like you're in a different place. And it works. It's a good face. Uh, that mouth looks really good. I think that mouth, he really brought that one together good. And then the coloring complements it just perfectly. Yeah, it's just not as overly elaborate and detailed and dark. Um, you could tell he was just getting here with his, probably his Hunt 102, that dipping pen, like, like this guy right here, dipping in that ink, and he's just drawing out these lines, just getting some textures in there and just getting through it and then doing some sketchy drawing through there on the forehead for the, the lighting effect. Probably trying to get through these as quick as he could. I like this bottom face. That looks really good. More vague backgrounds, more fighting, chopping, punching. There's a the robot getting his arm ripped off because he's a robot, so you can chop him up all you want. They did this a lot in these books here. Uh, a pinup of the character in the middle. Mark Beecham, I'm not sure who he is. I didn't ever like this because it was so weird. It's okay now. I, I don't mind it as much, but it's not my favorite thing, but whatever. Um, yeah. More of the same. God, these two basically became one somehow. I don't know what's going on. I didn't read this. Oh, big color change again. Like, you look at the color tones going on here, and then you flip it over to here, and now it's a whole other thing. I think he was trying to get through this panel, like did a silhouette of everything. He's like, this is just, I got to do some silhouettes. I, I got to get through this book. Lots of silhouettes, lots, lots of simple things. He's like, I, I can see the finish line coming up. I got to get to it. Um, so he takes those short kits where he can. This is a crazy design where this, like you got his head here. 
And then, you know, this is his shoulder and his arms and his elbow coming forward to his hands with the guns. He just leaves a big open void, like nothing in there. Shortcut, maybe. Visually interesting, definitely. Always like this page. This looks great. I kind of wish these panels weren't here. I love this big silhouette almost of them. His face and this very angular arm with the coat, the gun, and the way that his body comes down here with these feet. And then this face of this girl and the hair, I think it's so well drawn. I like this so much. I, I kind of want to see just a drawing without all these panels. It's just these two figures. I think that looks really neat. That always stood out to me. There's a big shot of the team, as always. Talking about their adventures. They did good. We defeated the bad guys. We're awesome. Let's 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 go be cool somewhere else. Just kind of ended on a like a wet fart. Just kind of ended it. So you came when for th these books, when they came out, we were all here for the art. The artist, Jay Lee. He was a big thing at the time. We were all there to see his stuff. And visually, it was interesting at the time. Still visually interesting now. Um, but as a reading experience, there's not much to it, but that's okay. But they knew how to put together a attractive, interesting cover is for sure. So Wildcats Trilogy, early 90s. You know what it is. You know why you're here. So that's all I've got for this one. So thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate it very much. And we'll see you on the next one.